Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Stevenson. I'm a registered nurse working in the field of mental health. A little bit about me. <clears throat> I graduated from Deakin University with my Bachelor of Nursing in 2020. I have since worked in private mental health facility and a public mental health facility. Um, there I have encountered consumers with a range of mental health concerns uh, from eating disorders to substance use disorder to schizophrenia to bipolar affective disorder and everything in between. I have recently commenced my graduate diploma in mental health nursing with Central Queensland University. Just before we get into it, I just want to give you a quick rundown of what this presentation is going to be about. It will be about advanced practice nursing in mental health. I'll take you through the pillars of advanced practice nursing as well as the knowledge and skills required to be an advanced practice nurse. I'll also justify those pillars in the context of advanced mental health nursing. I'll take you through a few of the roles of advanced practice nursing that we have in Australia. And I will also let you know how those roles contribute to caring for consumers with clinically, clinically complex needs, as well as how advanced practice nurses can contribute to recovery-oriented, safe, quality-assured, consumer-centred care. Finally, I'll finish up on some crucial points for nurses looking to pursue a career within an advanced practice role. Advanced practice nursing is where nurses take all of their education and experience and use it to go above and beyond that scope of practice that we all learned about during our bachelor's degree. It's less of a job title and more of an overall role that nurses can take within their organisation. As such, there is a certain level of experience and knowledge required. Some of that is gained from postgraduate study, some of it is gained from experience on the floor. That's where nurses gain those really important complex decision making skills and their clinical proficiencies. As they move through their career, they start off as a novice, as a student nurse, and they progress towards an expert nurse, which is where you get that advanced practice nursing coming in. In between, you've got graduate nurses who could be considered uh, advanced beginners and then you move through to proficient and competent and finally expert. In doing this, they move away from their clinical actions being governed by rules and guides and towards them being led by their own experience and intuition. These stages of proficiency are not static as many nurses may find themselves an expert in one area uh, but be considered a novice in another. It's really important that we as nurses are aware of these limitations and endeavour to further develop our knowledge and our practice to overcome them. However, advanced practice nursing does not only encompass expert clinical care. The Nursing and Midwifery Board describes the core principles, the core pillars of advanced practice nursing to be clinical care, education, professional leadership, research and supportive systems. In this context, education pertains to the education of others, be that colleagues or consumers. It can be done by mentoring others, assisting with the delivery of postgraduate programs, and identifying the learning needs of others. Professional leadership can be demonstrated by serving as a committee member, managing care in complex settings, and representing nursing in forums discussing the healthcare needs of communities. Nurses can support systems by identifying areas of improvement, planning for it, and then implementing changes and monitoring for the improvement of quality of care. Advanced practice nurses must also engage in research to contribute to the overall improvement for care of consumers. I'll now run through a few of the advanced practice nursing roles that we have here in Australia, starting with perhaps the most well-known nurse practitioner. To become a nurse practitioner, nurses must first obtain 5,000 hours of clinical experience along with the endorsement of a medical practitioner. They often work with an experienced nurse practitioner while they're studying um, and they complete a master's degree. This allows them to operate as the most senior and independent clinical nurses. As such, the scope of practice is expanded to include diagnosis, prescription of medications, ordering and interpretation of diagnostic imaging, formulation and assessment of treatment plans, and the referral of consumers to other health professionals. 
The seniority and independence of nurse practitioners, coupled with their extensive education and experience, puts them in a prime position to aid in educating others and operating as part of committees and forums that aim to improve care for consumers. Nurse practitioners tend to work in a broad specialty of nursing, such as mental health as a whole. They also tend to be found in medical practices working alongside general practitioners. Furthermore, this is one of the only advanced practice nursing roles that we have in Australia that is a regulated role, meaning it has its own registration and its own set of standards. Moving on to clinical nurse specialists, they are those who are considered a specialist in their field of nursing. In terms of education, they are required to have a standard bachelor's degree as well as any level of postgraduate qualification. The role encompasses the development of policies and procedures related to their specialty, clinical recommendations based on diagnoses, and the development and delivery of education for other clinicians and consumers. This role is not regulated by the NMBA like the nurse practitioner role is. As such, the position description is dictated by employers and EBAs. As the name suggests, they are often they often operate within a niche subspecialty, such as alcohol and other drugs or eating disorders. CNSs can be found in secondary or tertiary health services. Moving on, we have the clinical nurse consultant, who also can be regarded as a specialist in their field. This role requires that the nurse that the practitioner have a postgraduate qualification in their chosen field of nursing, most often a master's degree. Employers may also require a certain number of years of experience post qualification, most often five years. The main difference between a CNC and a CNS is that CNCs often work with the healthcare service management to review and optimise consumer care. Like the CNS role, CNCs are not regulated and the role is again determined by the employer and the services EBA. Unlike CNSs, they tend to work within a broad specialty, but they may take on a special project that they work on that benefits consumers and organisations. For example, the CNCs at my workplace are involved in ensuring the least restrictive interventions are used. This entails being a part of committees dedicated to lowering the use of restraints and seclusion, as well as developing clear plans that staff can use to keep the consumer safe and the staff safe. The plans are developed in coordination with the treating doctors, the consumer where appropriate, and the nurse in charge on shift. As we be begin to further understand the relationship between poor mental health and poor physical health, we are seeing more and more consumers who have clinically complex concerns. This is where advanced practice nurses are really, really useful because of their experience and knowledge. They are able to perform a broad range of comprehensive and clinically relevant assessments despite their chosen specialty. And aside from the aforementioned APN roles, nurses are also able to take on what's known as a care coordinator role. This role exists to assist the consumer by liaising between acute and community services, ensuring continuity between all stages of care. This is really, really important for consumers with clinically complex needs, as oftentimes some concerns are overlooked or misdiagnosed, and that can leave the consumer feeling underrepresented or overwhelmed by the number of services that they need to access to get the care they require. This involvement means that everything is streamlined and the consumers are able to get safe, consumer-centred, recovery-oriented and quality-assured care. Part of delivering recovery-oriented care to consumers with clinically complex needs is promoting autonomy and self-determination. This can be really difficult to ensure in an inpatient mental health setting, as many consumers are placed under the Mental Health Act on an inpatient treatment order. They may have limited insight into their illness and because of this feel like they don't require any treatment. This, however, is not unique to inpatient settings as many consumers are discharged under the Mental Health Act on community treatment orders, meaning in their own homes, they are still not able to make decisions regarding their treatment. In these situations, the APN can use their knowledge and experience to advocate for the consumer and highlight ways in which treatment can be delivered in a less restrictive manner. APNs such as CNCs can also work to develop policies that ensure 
all least restrictive interventions are employed before removing the consumer's right to refuse treatment by putting them on a treatment order. Advanced practice nurses ensure that recovery-oriented care is safely delivered to consumers, both directly and indirectly, directly with their knowledge of the system and surrounding services and consumer advocacy, and indirectly through the development of policies and procedures based on the latest evidence available. APNs also impact safe care by helping to educate more, nov more novice nurses, both informally on the floor at the time of or after an incident, and through the development of tailored education packages. As leadership is a pillar of advanced practice, many APNs sit on advisory boards dedicated to the improvement of consumer safety. As a regulated profession, nurse practitioners are granted greater autonomy and greater scope of practice than other nurses. As a result of this, they are able to deliver safe care by joining GP-led teams and providing care to those who may not otherwise access it, ensuring concerns are addressed promptly and where necessary. APNs can improve the quality of care for consumers whilst applying the pillar of support of systems. This pillar relates to ensuring that the healthcare system is operating at an optimal level and striving for the best consumer results. Part of this for APNs is engaging in quality improvement. This process involves the APN working as part of a multidisciplinary team to identify an area of practice that can be improved, designing a way to do so and evaluating the outcome. These quality improvements are often targeted at streamlining processes and workflows and result in improved quality of care for consumers. They further improve the quality of care by utilising their knowledge and experience to provide holistic care to consumers in any area of healthcare. Within the mental health com context, this may look like an APN performing a range of physical assessments to ensure that their consumers' physical needs are met, not just the mental ones. This early assessment of physical health can decrease the likelihood that the consumer needs to be transferred out of an inpatient mental health ward or the need for more appointments when necessary when in the community. Finally, I'd just like to touch on some points for nurses seeking an advanced practice role. For those who would like to move into these roles, they should first identify an advanced practice nurse that operates within their workplace. Finding an experienced and relevant nurse to, dis to guide your decisions and assist you to grow is an important part of nursing. Additionally, engaging in clinical supervision with an experienced nurse is useful. Due to the nature of the specialty, mental health nursing can be very confronting and difficult. Without clear and visible goals, many mental health nurses who are new to the specialty may struggle to identify whether they are applying their skills successfully. Clinical supervision allows nurses to reflect on their practice in a safe and non-judgmental space, leading to increased resilience and confidence. Nurses looking to gain leadership experience prior to taking on an APN role may seek out a position on a committee, whether it be a small ward specific committee or a larger whole organisation one. This will aid in developing the necessary skills for whatever role they decide to fill. Thank you all very much for listening to my presentation and for viewing my poster. See you next time.